Hello, I'm Cara Dahl Russell, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some thoughts about the music of Mozart, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who lived from 1756 to 1791, and in particular, his horn concerto in E flat. If you have not listened to my talk on Beethoven's Romance in F Major, you might want to listen to that first. It it speaks a lot about the development and progression of music from the very complex music of the Baroque era, which occasionally had works that they called romances, which were very simple, hummable melodies, but how these romances were in stark contrast to the majority of music of the Baroque period, and how that complexity of the Baroque period led to the more melodic simplicity of the classical period. Mozart, of course, is always pointed to as the predominant voice of the classical period, although there were many other very good practitioners of that period. He is today the most famous and pointed to as not only because he was a practitioner, but he happened to be one who helped codify and the structures and language of that classical era time period. So speaking of a romance as a work that is generally considered to be tender or sweet, the romance is a central section of this Mozart horn concerto. Uh, the one we're going to hear is the third of a set of four we get to hear a real-time comparison between artists if you listen to the Beethoven romance for violin and then listen to this horn concerto with the romance section at the middle. We get to hear a real-time comparison because Beethoven began his work in Mozart's classical era. And it's, it's thought now that Mozart may have been completing this concerto the same year that Beethoven wrote his romance for violin. So very much contemporaries going on here, although different ages, still contemporaries. Mozart wrote these four horn concertos for a childhood friend, Joseph Lutgeb. So he was very well acquainted with the skills and playing of this particular artist. These works were written for what is called the natural horn of the day, which is a horn we rarely see today, a horn that is played that has no vowels. So unless you're listening to an early music group that has a real dedication to playing historical instruments, you probably won't see this kind of horn. This means that all the sounds and pitches of this horn are done exclusively with the lips and the teeth and the embouchure of the mouth and lips. Consequently, these works are known for displaying techniques such as lip trills and hand stopping and rapid tonguing that are still considered difficult things to do today, but they were especially difficult on the natural horn of the day that didn't have the help of today's modern valves. While this particular concerto is numbered the third concerto of the set of four. It was actually the last one he completed. And the first one was actually only completed after his death. And since Mozart did not list this in his catalog of works, some musicologists infer from that that he did not consider it as important. But given his monumental output, it's just as likely that he was rushing the completion of this set of horn concertos for a printing or a performance deadline, and he simply forgot to jot it down, and then he died, so he didn't get a chance. He was notorious for working on multiple pieces at once, and the historical catalog of his works that we rely on today was not done by Mozart, but was all completed after his death. There are some critics who like to say that Mozart didn't think much of these works because it supports their own opinions that these horn works lack imagination. 
I read one musical historian who called these works boring. I have to think at some level, those commentaries are from people who perhaps just don't like horn. And there definitely are people who think that the horn or the double bass or the bassoon are not solo instruments, that they should only be supporting instruments and that they should never be heard as a soloist. Though that contingent of thought still exists with some musical critics and musicologists today. Since I was raised in a household with two French horn players, I can tell you that these concertos are a revered and essential part of the canon of works for horn. More than that, the Central Romance movement that I began by talking about, the Central Romance movement of this concerto is roundly considered to be one of the most lovely things ever written for the horn. So please listen to this. If you get a chance, listen to my talk about the Beethoven Romance for Violin, and then you can bask in these beautiful, luscious melodies by two contemporary composers writing in the same style and both writing a work designated as a romance. I link here, of course, to the Horn Concerto so that you can hear the Horn Concerto in its entirety. And then I'll also have a link either here or at the end to go back to that Beethoven talk so you can compare and contrast and enjoy. Thank you.